Hello, well, I'm going to show up on this little back saw, a little tenon saw. It's got 14 teeth per inch, and it's made by a company called Zlux. And I've had this for a good long while, and it's a good little saw, except now it's blunt. I've been using it, and I hit a pin, and it's took the edge off. And besides, they need sharpening on a regular basis anyway. So, it doesn't seem to really cut very quickly now. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to sharpen and show you how I sharpen my back saws. In this case, this is a 14 TPI, little tenon saw, back saw. And it's a good little thing. It's got a cross cut profile, which means that the teeth are sharpened at 90 degrees. So, perpendicular with the flat of the direction of the actual saw itself. And... Um, the teeth themselves are then set so one goes one way and then one goes that way and that creates the curve of the cut. So what we're going to do is we're going to sharpen it. Now there's various ways you can sharpen your, your saw. One is send it off to a saw doctor and another way is do it yourself and that's what I do. And I've been doing that way for years. Now I haven't got the privilege of having a saw vice, which is like a metal vice, a bit like this but they've got long jaws. That support the edge of the blade and that's really important you can't just put your saw in there like that and expect that to you know to stay still that it'll vibrate every time you make a you'll sort of jump back and forwards every time you make a stroke with a file well that ain't going to be very helpful because you'll end up with either a rounded tooth or you just won't be accurate at all so we have to support it now i make these things up and this is like a well it's just i call it a sharpening clamp and i write on there what sort it's for and it's from a spare jackson but also it's for this little Z-Lux as well. So, who's that coming to see me? I feel like a doggy come see me. Hello, Dora. Turn Dora the Explore. She's a funny little thing. She's got a thing about a bum, though. She's like a bum rub, just there. And then her tongue goes in there. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's so good, isn't it? Oh, 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 see that tongue going in there? Anyway, enough of that. <laughs> so, all we have to do, she's got to pester me now, isn't she? You're going to pester? You are, she's going to pester. I want something, Daddy. Give me food. So all we have to do, we grab this little support, or this vice, this clamp, whatever you call it, and we position it just below the gullet of the teeth itself. And then I tighten these nuts up. I make one for each saw, but this one does two saws that I own. My little dovetail saw that I also sharpen, which is a mad feat. I tend to wear ready specs like these, quite high magnification, and then like that. Oh, I can see, I can see the teeth now. It's really good. It's like having magnifying glasses on your eyes. So you just tighten it up. Generally, I would use a spanner. Why is my spanner? Let's go and grab a spanner quickly. Well, spanner like that one. Don't be too tight. Just enough to hold it on so it doesn't slide down. The other thing I do, which I normally do before I put the clamp on. I'll run a file, I can't find my um, flattening file because I've got one that's in a block of wood with a couple of clamps on and it holds it square to the side of the actual blade itself. So exactly what you have to do is you just gently over the tops of the teeth, it might sound like madness, like that, flattening the top of the teeth. If you don't do that, progressive sharpening is what will happen is your teeth will end up going like that, you end up like a you know, roller coaster tooth pattern, which won't be very helpful. Now, the, uh, uh, <coughs> my worms out there. A crosscut saw like this was actually really easy to um, sharpen because you haven't got to worry about your flame angle and all that lot, and all that lot. It's all literally straight across 90 degrees. What gives you the curve and what have you is the actual, well, it's putting the set on, and you do that with a set of set and like these, yeah? The saw set. And what that does, it pu pushes one tooth over one way. And then you do the opposite direction, put the teeth in the other direction. You, you've got to make sure obviously you do the right teeth every time. Otherwise you'd be in a bit of a, a bit of a state, wouldn't you? Or your saw will anyway. Now, this is the um I've got to remember the size of it. I've got them down somewhere actually. Oh, I've scribbled that down. File sizes. Right, I did write it down, so I keep forgetting. Please forgive me. Well, depending on how many TPI your saw is, in this case this is a 14. Um I know what this one is, this is a six inch uh, double X slim taper. So it's a, it's a you know, uh, extra, extra, extra slim taper. And this one's a six inch. You can get um, a, bit, a bit shorter as well, actually. But equally, if I was going to be doing something like a dovetail saw, I'd be using my other um, 
XX alt file. It's the same profile as this one, but it's shorter and effectively what has it has a more of a taper on the end. So it's skinnier on the end. Or I'd use a diamond, diamond a triangular um, needle file. That also sort of works quite well. But as you go um, to you know fewer teeth per inch, you might use a seven inch slim taper, like a six to seven, you know, I don't know, like a ripping saw or something like that cross cut profile like this one. We're going to be using this double or extra extra slim taper file. So basically all I do is it's very, very simple. I flatten the top off already. Don't forget to do that. It might sound silly, but don't forget, I was you'll end up with a roller coaster saw. And I sometimes use a bit of chalk on here, and now I literally just place that into the gullet of the tooth, and the gullet is the piece that's cut out. The tooth is actually the pointy bit, the bit you cut you. And then I'll take one swipe on each tooth at a time. Just one. I don't get mad. I don't want to do two because you'll end up causing problems. If you feel that you need to do another pass, do another pass over the whole saw. And then again, and again, and again. You feel it with the back of this. You don't want to be running that way with with the, so if you rub that way obviously you're gonna take the, the edge off because you want the cut on the forward stroke ideally. You know, but on the back stroke as well. Depends how you use it. So I've got to run that across here like so. I'm not editing this video, so I'm hoping I'm not gonna bore you this. But we're, we're gonna to get to the actual setting of the saw as well, and I won't actually show you all the setting of the saw because that takes too long. And being that I'm not editing this video, <coughs> that would get extremely boring. I'll have to keep talking, and you, I know how much you'd love that. Especially my Norfolk accent, if you're wondering where, where I'm from. I'm from Norfolk, just in East Anglia of the United Kingdom. And now we live in France. Thank God for that. We do like it here in France. I have to admit, I know a lot of people don't necessarily like Matt Klein in France. It seems to—I don't know why—but he just um, increased the wages for all the nurses. Which I, during this pandemic, I thought that was a, a very good gesture. And he said he was going to do that, and he's done it. So, yeah, very good. Well done, Matt Klein. So Emmanuel, Emmanuel Macron. So I, I was quite taken back by that because Belgian politicians seem to lie a lot. I don't know why that is. Maybe it's to hide all their bad dealings and poor contracts. But anyway. It's quite easy to get out of track and actually end up doing a tooth twice, which I just did then. And then can you just rotate the um, file? Because what you'll find is the file itself, the um, the little the, the grooves in, in the file will fill up with metal filings. And then you'll find you'll be bouncing about instead of actually cutting. You feel it. You feel it as you go. It, it, it seems you start off okay and then it progresses. By the time you get back round to the um, face you started with, if you feel the need to, um, you'll find that most of those files will have fell out. And then, then it's fine to go again. So if it doesn't, just use chalk. Not blackboard chalk, but like old um, engineer's chalk or something like that. And rub a bit of that on there. And what happens is the chalk doesn't stick into the... Um, actual filings into the file itself so they fall out the filings fall out easier I remember watching my father do this as a kid especially every single evening it's what it felt like because he used to work quite, although he's a boat builder um, during one of the recessions I say one off probably in the 70s it would have been in the 70s I think he'd um be in there sharpening the saw a while because he's always blunting on the saws because he's doing window fitting at the time even though he was boat building he came out of the boat building game to go into window fitting because it's always the hardy trade that seems to be hit first in the recession well building trade then hardy trade but double glazing was was getting to be very popular during that time and that was all aluminium double glazing then with mahogany frames but you used to have to sharpen the saw there every night because the job was blunt in the saw, basically. Right, that's one pass done. I have to decide whether or not I'm going to do another pass. Now, if you look over the top of your teeth, I'm going to do I'm going to bring you in a bit closer now. 
just so you can see a little bit more. Can you see a bit more? How are you doing down there, mate? De -de 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 -de. So this is going to be a bit of a longer video. You, when you actually run your fingers, don't do that because obviously you cut yourself. But if you just like you're plucking your skin, you know, uh, you're plucking your fishnets maybe if you're into that. And if you feel that it's actually grabbing all the way along, you know that every tooth you've managed to put an edge on. It's a little bit tired there. Let's bring in a bit closer to the, the food passes just so you can see. So as you, the hair is really good, but back here I can feel it's a bit dull. So I'm just going to run that hair through across one more time, but only a quick swipe this time, and not too much aggression. I'm just gonna... You've got to make sure you keep your file at the right angle as well. When I say the right angle, it's 90 degrees to the side of the saw. But equally, we don't want to twist it one way or the other. You want that top part being flat, so you maintain a nice uniform V. It obviously depends on the profile of your saw, uh, whether or not you've got a, it's a cross-cut saw like this one, or whether it's a... Um, Oh, saw with a flame angle, such as a uh, rip saw. You know, you've got to try and maintain that angle. You'll be going that way with that. But in this case, I'm just going to do one pass straight across, make the sure that the actual file is held in the correct position. But it's a mechanical motion. It's a bit like if you're trying to sharpen your chisels by hand and not using a jig or anything. It's like a um, you, muscle memory. So as, as you're pushing the, pushing the actual um, file across the saw, you want to try and prevent a rocking action. So you want to try and keep it fairly straight. So I'm, instead of me doing this or trying to move my arms, all I do is I use this one to guide it, and the right hand is then used just to push. So just just literally pushing the actual file across your teeth. Oh, there goes my light. Dee -dee -dee -dee. <laughs> oh, God, it's feeling a lot better now. So, speed up. So you can run that across here like so. so. I'm not trying to do a deep cut now because I'm pretty much there. I'm just giving that final little touch up. On this one. There you go. You still have to make sure you're going all the way along because you don't want to create a hollow in your blade. And that's the other reason why flattening the tops of the teeth with a file sorry, is a good idea. I say sorry, it's correct. With a file, that is a good idea. It helps to keep the saw in good, usable order. Now, if you get a kink in your saw, you're going to see if you can paint that out with a hammer. But in my experience, it's easier said than done. I'm quite happy with that. That's good. And I'm feeling that's good, good, good. So now we can remove that from the clamp. And nice. And the next step is going to be using the saw set. So I've got my saw set here, and you can see, I don't know if you can see that there, but that, those teeth are shiny now on the top. See that? So because they're shiny on the tops, that means I've removed the material and it feels nice and sharp. The other thing I've got to do now is I've got to create the curve. I've got the edge. You don't always have to use saw set every single time. Sometimes you can get away with not using it every time. Um, and I've got to decide whether or not that is what I'm going to do. I actually don't think I need to. Because you, if you run your fingers across the side of the saw here, and you can still and you can feel the teeth, actually, the points of the teeth. If they feel polished, which they don't, because they're plucking my skin, you don't need to. But I'll just show you, show you what I mean by setting the saw. So I don't think I'm going to actually do this saw, to be honest, because it's already got set. You don't have to always set every single time. And if you look at these teeth, you can actually see that they're actually um, going each way still. So you don't necessarily want to do that every time. So all you do is you place your um, saw set, start at the end, obviously. You've got to do it in the middle because of the camera. And you just literally push the tooth over. Now at the moment, I've got this set too um, coarse. I've got to push that tooth over too far, and you're at risk of breaking the tooth. So you don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to readjust it. So all you do is you loosen this and then you twist that round to a different number. In this case, I'm going to have it on what's that? Eight, seven, one, two, 
Okay, what am I normally have on eight normally? Eight. So literally just place it over the tooth, make sure it's on the right tooth, push in the right direction. So you do every alternative tooth as you go along, like so I'm doing eight at the moment. And you do every alternative tooth. So basically you just squeeze that, that pushes the tooth over, and that creates a set on the saw. I'm not gonna do the whole saw because I don't think I need to. Anyway, let's see how uh, well, I'll see how much better that is now. So we'll plunk that bit of wood back in there and see if that cuts any better. Because that would be nice if it does. 